Namaskar and welcome to this exciting episode of Sathology Debunking Mythology. Sathology means science of truth, the study of truth. Opposite of that is mythology, which means science or study of fake lie or imagination. You know, the global chronology affects, it's, it's been prepared by the West, but there is no verification or validation by India and other countries because the, most of the, you can see the intelligentsia or the people who can challenge the Western narrative come from India. And they have not produced a alternative chronology to the Western chronology. So today's program is very, very special. That's what you're going to see that I have a very special guest who does exactly this, who has done so many books. I've got three of his books with me. And he has presented papers in many places based on that chronology. So let us welcome Sri Vedvir Arya. Welcome, Vedvir Ji. Uh, uh, namaste, namaste, Arya. Namaste, namaste. So this chronology has been a very complex topic, isn't it? Like the people... Yes, go ahead. You're saying something. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a complex. But uh, various subjects like history, linguistics, even um, numerous uh, scientific studies like archaeogenetics, even uh, carbon dating, uh, many other uh, scientific studies based on the chronology, mm -hmm. because your scientific studies have to rely on the established chronology. Correct. If the established chronology has an error or it uh, has a, some kind of a inherent uh, inconsistency, then scientific studies they are not going to reveal the truth. True, true. So, so what happens? Certain biases have been cropped in in the chronology, as well as the historical narratives. Those are becoming the basis for the his scientific studies. Correct. So there is a need to correct this because chronology is completely based on facts. Right. They, you cannot afford to have a divergence of opinion in the chronology. You may have a divergence of opinion about the narrative of a particular historical event, but you cannot have a divergence of opinion about the dates and the timeline of a uh, the chronological history uh, uh, in all civilization, rather in the world chronology. Right. So therefore, it, there is a serious need to reconcile again world chronology because now we are better equipped. We have uh, we can. Uh, do the that big data analytics and then come out of a, uh, a very, very uh, uh, well-structured world chronology. See, one of the interesting thing is like, uh, for example, in the West, archaeology or these kind of sciences, like what you can discover. So the world knows that the world is very old. Earth is very old. And world knows that uh, so many historical incidents have been well recorded in the Indian Vedic tradition. And Mahabharata Ramayana yes. very well recorded. But still, the academic world is stuck at 10,000 years. That 10,000 years, we don't know anything before that. And, uh -huh. uh, and that is being taught in the regular schools. In fact, some people go to the level of even 6,000 years. And so they try to syncretize everything after BC. 1 BC. 180, sorry. Yeah. 180 is after that, they try to syncretize everything. Which is phenomenally wrong because most of the recorded history of temples in India, even the pyramids of Egypt, uh, date back minimum yeah. 6,000 years back. And temples in India date back minimum 20,000 years back. Cities like Varanasi, people say from the beginning of creation. And it's, it's a lot of things to mm -hmm. be discovered. A lot of things need to be said. So uh, before you start your presentation, one question is, is that how does the Western chronology, which has been established, gets, you know, does any you know, Indian gets challenged by the Indian campuses or Indian universities anytime? Have you seen that? Uh, no, because um, uh, uh, the colonial legacy that actually driving the modern academicians, so they don't, they never uh, ever imagined beyond what has been taught. Uh, the uh, in universities that's why they are not able to challenge the whatever the world chronology has been uh, arrived last 300 400 years so they are all following those sheet anchors so once you are following the those uh, wrongly fixed sheet anchors 
you have no other option to come to the same conclusions this is the reason the modern academicians or modern historians are just uh, carrying the same legacy whatever has been uh, established last 200 300 years so therefore i hardly find any new research by the history or historians anywhere in the world it's only few dates some are some people are doing some chronological research so they come out of some 100 year or 50 year plus minus some kind of a solution because still there is a long uh, historical research on biblical chronology there are numerous references in the bible but they are not able to establish the uh, correctness of the biblical chronology so that's why they are all working in some small pockets yeah like not a single contemporary greek roman or any of the kingdoms verified any of the characters of bible and they used to write a lot they used to write on the stones yes. they used to write they used to share you should but no discussion period like whatever period which the biblical bibliophilia as they say i mean bibliophilia is another word used some sometimes they say but not a single record is found not a single grave is found not a single like there's no evidence whatsoever no evidence yeah and uh, and and it's very astonishing actually for me that that then the west talks about chronology but generally in the western academy like i go and search the libraries and i was going there and i was looking there's no book no book there's no book yeah. on the there's nothing no date no data and when the professor bart hartman the he said something that not a single zilch there is no data he was attacked by the church and 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 yeah. and that he is he is peddling some lies but there is no data and when even the shroud they say is it's a very recent one 12th century 13th century 14th century very recent one and so they are saying carbon dating has proved it to the point no there is no data there is no data whatsoever so i mean it's is going to be no, first uh, we need to huh. Yeah, yes, Aditi. First, we have to understand this uh, few subjects like human history, linguistics, and other the based on the chronology. These subjects, uh, the the basis for the chronology was evolved last three hundred years. Prior to that, every civilization had its own chronological history. Only after the advent of the Christian chrono, uh, the Christianity, the Christian historians started reconciling because they. and naturally say uh, religiously they wanted to prove the historicity of the bible because bible refers to the assyrian kings and uh, babylonian kings and the egyptian kings and the jewish kings so now they have to reconcile that pronoun for that reason then when they started reading it the problem is uh, the egyptian started claiming more than 10000 or 15000 bc their chronological history is the manetho Uh, he was the uh, who compiled the egyptian traditional chronological history actually the first dynasty let us leave out the gods and demigods rule in egypt even first dynasty manetho is actually giving the date around 5500 to 6000 bc the manetho and if you look at the greek civilizations the greek uh, philosophers and scholars they are writing that atlantis the city he that city was submerged by sea somewhere uh, 9000 to 10000 bc and apart from that these uh, the greek historians who came to india they are writing that uh, indians had a, a chronological history from 6500 bc onwards because before alexander 6451 years of chronological history india has and one fifth the list of 153 kings and they are equating that uh, hercules of indian king and with the uh, bacchus of uh, greek uh, his uh, the historical uh, person it means the greeks had a history from the atlantis city then the bacchus at least 7000 bc then they also talk about the zoroaster who wrote the avesta he was 6000 bc to 7000 bc so apart from that the uh, the entire sumerian we have the king list are available they also date uh, actually more than 7000 bc the um, the list of uh, kings given in sumerian tablets you can when but what they did 
after this uh, the christian because they think that uh, anno dom uh, the anno mundi is the date of creation so this is the one firm belief that the this earth created only somewhere 4000 bc or prior to that some 1500 years more to 5500 bc so this it means what kind of a science you are talking about even the 17th or 16th century scientists like lightfoot and thereafter the 18th century newton they all are obsessed to start from the this date of creation and they have even come out of a particular time morning 9 o'clock god has created the earth and these actually the so called scientists of the european academia they are talking about so this all modern subjects the, the world history and world chronology was actually evolved based on the christian faiths hmm. so there is a need to secularize the world history they talk about this is the secular history actually it's a communal history what they are talking to they are actually teaching to sure. us so sure. that's why there is a serious need to review the entire world chronology on secular grounds because <laughs> we have to uh, dechristian is the world academy of us absolutely absolutely i think we should we will learn more about in your presentation we can get started and and you said correctly we need to deracinate the colonize the version of history mm-hmm. and and the the funny thing is they go on the popular american channels and they if anyone questions them they are very much see indians are very inspired like i see when the when i see the indian uh, tv shows and other things oh wow what randall carlson is saying what this guy is saying what that but when you look at their facts they're just saying the one propaganda news from their perspective and there are some people who are very honest also like for example there's one of the uh, one of the american researchers he said that the amazon seems to be like an entirely artificial forest and it 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 was a garden it was established and a lot of communities still living like somebody did a leader uh, there's a technology for the laser they can actually find out uh what is beneath the forest and it's a huge huge cities over there in amazonia and uh, which people are yeah. not uh, people are scared to discover and also they are very difficult to reach those places also and most of these places are discovered by the ranchers who are trying to destroy the amazon for their commercial purposes you know so we we'll get started and then we will discuss it more yeah. after, you know? yes yes so i'll start my presentation and uh, wherever uh, you can stop me and we can discuss the certain sure. integrities of these issues because it is very very important because when we claim that uh, the antiquity of the ancient civilizations again the this world academicians come to the rescue of the whatever the christian chronology they taught or they taught us so they saying that uh, then the, work, the even the oldest uh, civilization egypt is only up to 3000 bc then uh, right. what you are talking about yes so let us first Uh, reconcile the world chronology yes. then uh, we will understand the how the civilizations have been uh, actually the we can uh, even uh, uh, search that uh, cradle of civilization right then only otherwise uh, till date the modern academicians are clueless to give the antiquity of various civilizations <laughs> that's right that's right even sumeria yeah. and many of these names are also just given like sumerian sumerian is given which which oh, yes right. and uh, mesopotamia and all of them coincide like uh, in the same oh, area yes, mesopotamia certainly, so certainly. there is a same place over there nobody goes northeast russia nobody goes like upper central russia or uh, nobody goes towards the northern europe these three areas are totally untouched and yes. and our scriptures refer like mahabharata ramayana you read it i read it it refers a lot to these regions yeah yeah they miss out the complete south american history But ironically yeah. yes ironically they call the oldest civilization is the sumerian they call it mesopotamia that may be the cradle of civilization <laughs> but still they have not able to find out who were those uh, indo european people had that indo european language and there is a funny word used proto- because indo- a language indo- must be evolved from the civilization where right. is, where was that Sumerian was not the Indo-European. Oh, no. Then where was that? Because they deny the antiquity of India, so they will never find that Indo-European. No, the actually, whole... it is the Indian civilization that later migrated to Europe that became the Indo-European. Otherwise, uh, without India, you cannot have Indo-European civilization or anything. 
you know if you just notice the travel path of different rishis or armies of from hastinapur or other places or even ayodhya you exactly know where they are going because they you follow them they tell you river this river they cross this river they cross this river they cross then they reach this area so they describe the geography and so you can easily make out where they are talking about now if you follow it huh. anyway we get so start let us uh, uh, yeah yeah please so let us discuss i am just share the presentation the what are the ancient civilizations these are the i can uh, i'll just list out yeah the bharatvarsh this is the uh, uh, and then greek civilization then we have persian sumerian egyptian assyrian i am adding another one this is the shaka aratta sitian this is actually uh, mentioned by the herodotus sitia and then chinese these are the uh, ancient civilization power so we need to first trace the antiquity of all these civilizations then we have to reconcile the entire world chronology this is the uh, uh, basis and the same thing has been done by the uh, modern academicians of 16th 17th and 18th century but what what they did they come out of a one sheet anchor for the world chronology what is that that is anno domini anno domini they are saying that this is the single pillar edifice i always call it because uh, entire world chronology they have reconciled considering the anno domini as the sheet anchor now what uh, uh, prior to 17th 18th or 16th century no where anno domini was uh, mentioned as the anno incarnation anno incarnation means the jesus part but it's only 16th 17th century or uh, probably maximum we can go back to 13th century or 14th century they started believing that anno domini is equal to the anno incarnation but prior to that uh, even uh, the exigus the uh, dionysus exigus who actually uh, came out of that uh, easter calculus considering the epoch of anno domini he did not claim that it is the anno incarnation but let us uh, first explore whether this uh, epoch or uh, this sheet anchor of anno domini whether it deserve to be a sheet anchor of world chronology or not the present world chronology i just make it as a, it is a christian chronology it is not the world uh, it is because entire world chronology has been reconciled considering the first ad as the jesus birth without giving any due credit to the other sheet anchors of various other civilizations now what they think that anno mundi that that is actually epoch of adam or you can say that epoch of creation 4000 bc 4004 so now prior to that this earth did not exist this is actually the biblical faith but modern scientists because they know that earth existed prior to 4000 bc though because they are by birth christians they accept that the creation date cannot be uh, dated around 4000 bc but actually they think that there was no civilization at all so this is the another faith of the so called scientist that is actually they are actually christians in disguise so they deny the existence of civilizations instead of the uh, existence of the creation so that's why finally this anno mundi is become a uh, borderline you need not trace any civilization beyond that you cannot date beyond that so it is actually christian faith it is not anything scientific faith but if we explore the anno mundi whether it was 4000 no prior to uh, 17 or 16th century or prior, uh, before that many christian historians reconciled the world chronology they even date jesus birth into 5500 anno mundi it means that would have been uh, the anno mundi uh, the epoch of anno mundi was commenced at least uh, 5500 bc how that became 4000 bc it is actually even during the byzantine anno mundi is actually 5509 bce 2022 or uh, that is 7531 now 2023 it would uh, it would be 7532 how uh, then 
your annomundi means the epoch of adam or creation uh, should come in somewhere 5500 not 4004 bc this is actually the christians contracted it actually they reduced from 5500 to 4000 bc somewhere 4th 5th century because they believed that there would be a uh, some kind of a, a flood uh, destruction uh, a worldwide uh, uh, some kind of a, a, a the earth will end if this kind of a belief a christian uh, belief so but after 6000 years from the epoch of annomundi nothing happened so what the christian scholars did they actually contracted the date of annomundi they brought forward to 4000 bc now anyhow in 2000 somewhere uh, we have completed 6000 but no more christians believe that uh, the earth will end after 6000 uh, years starting from the annomundi so this is the reason it is actually a fake and it's actually a distortion or i can say 4004 bc is no way is related to any civilization any history so anno mundi has no value uh, should be no value in the history or in the world chronology now since uh, the modern historians they wanted to have a one epoch since they cannot start anno mundi that is not uh, historical or factual anything so they came out of this anno incarnation is equal to anno domini so that is anno incarnation is actually the 42nd regnal year of augustus augustus was a high historical person he was a, a, a roman emperor and uh, in the 42nd regnal year of augustus jesus was born i am not going into the historicity of jesus or uh, anybody i accept that 42nd regnal year of augustus was a historic historic epoch you have to simply fix the date of augustus then come to his uh, 42nd regnal year that may be the unknown incarnation no problem so chronologically we can but you cannot assume first ad as the 42nd regnal year of augustus because you have to present the evidence if the sheet anchor if you are selecting first ad as the sheet anchor it should stand its own based on various independently verifiable facts but nothing such uh, you have to rely on augustus or augustus uh, a roman emperor's chronology now actually what is anno domini it is the dionysus exiges he came out of an easter calculus and he called that uh, the epoch of easter calculus what he has used is the anno domini but what he did he referred anno domini is uh, uh, with reference to anno diocletian the diocletian era so what uh, uh, he says anno diocletian 249 is equal to anno domini 530 this is the statement of anno uh, this uh, Di- uh, dionysus exiges so prior to 249 anno diocletian the 532 years have been elapsed starting from uh, the anno do- the epoch of anno domini so modern historians because they are uh, using that easter calculus so first ad is the anno domini so therefore they fix the diocletian is equal to the Ma- marcus era so they assume marcus era diocletian is identical and uh, they fix the epoch of diocletian in 284 but there is no evidence to establish the epoch of anno diocletian as well as the the epoch of marcus era are identical actually both uh, are different epochs i will explain but let us uh, uh, verify the one very hard evidence diocletian the this uh, dionysus exiges he himself wrote a letters to petronius and he is uh, giving the date uh from anno incarnation is 802 if you can see that roman number d c c c 2 it is actually 802 so exiges though he is 
mentioning Anno Domini 533, but he is referring to Anno incarnation as 802. So this is the hard evidence to say that Anno incarnation was not identical to Anno Domini. Anno incarnation has to be dated at least uh, uh, 300 years before the Anno Domini. But what modern historians have done? They said. no this letter has some error so they just uh, changed that uh, the d and this three c's they changed with the x x x means 10 10 10 10 and then they said that it is actually 532 so this is the distortion or a fraud committed by the christians to just to whatever the because they were following one easter calculus starting from first ad so they they did this fraud in this letter they changed d c c 2 to d x x x 2 and then they said that it is actually 532 this is how they have established that anno domini is equal to anno incarnation but actually this is not true so that's why first ad cannot be taken as the sheet anchor of the world chronology so and uh, the diagnosis dionysus exigus is clearly indicating that anno incarnation and anno domini are not identical therefore you cannot take first ad as the sheet anchor of world chronology now what actually blunders committed by the european christians because since they are following some easter calculus starting from first ad so then they said that that is the anno domini and that is the anno incarnation therefore we hand that is the 42nd regnal year of augustus this is an assumption what i'm saying they did two blunders uh, the uh, european christian historians first what they distorted that uh, letter date of 802 to 532 based on that what they claimed that anno domini anno incarnation are identical and This, the the epoch of anno domini and the epoch of anno incarnation commenced in first ad therefore this is the 42nd regnal year of augustus so this is the first blunder and uh, again the anno diocletian they when is actually 249 equal to anno domini 533 so based on that what they did 533 uh, 533 they go, uh, they went back 249 years so they found 284 and 284 is actually the epoch of martyrsira so now they said that the epoch of diocletian era and the epoch of martyrsira are identical but there are numerous papyrus uh, documents found in alexandria as well as the abul fazl who wrote aine akbari they clearly indicate that diocletian era commenced in 77 bc not in 284 bc 284 ad so there was more than 360 years difference between the epoch of diocletian era and the epoch of martyrs era this is actually led to a 300 years problem what actually whether you have heard about that phantom time hypothesis is actually about this because the christian historians of europe they have done these two blunders first blunder is they have considered anno domini anno incarnation as identical and second blunder they have committed is they said that the epoch of diocletian era the epoch of martyrs era are identical these two led to a, a chronological error in the world chronology of more than 600 years if we correct it then the entire traditional chronologies of all world uh, civilizations ancient civilizations are correct and then we can uh, perfectly reconcile the world chronology so therefore there is a serious need to first correct these two blunders committed by the european christian history now the it is actually the julian calendar when it was introduced by julius caesar the people because uh, they are uh, they used to follow from uh, either full moon or new moon so they they are uh, actually familiar with the lunisolar calendar but when this uh, january to december the calendar because this calendar is neither solar uh, solar nor lunar or nor lunisolar therefore the common people used to refer to this calendar as a unknown confusion 
and let us first i have uh, i have established there were there were two blunders committed by the european historians now let us reconcile the every civilization how the chronology of world uh, civilization this is the archaeo astronomical evidence based uh, the absolute chronology is actually two calendars uh, india followed one pre siddhantic calendar and later siddhantic calendar so siddhantic calendar is the surya siddhanta and uh, various other siddhantas evolved after that so the dating i have uh, established uh, the date of surya siddhanta is 22nd february 6778 ad and prior to that uh, pre siddhantic calendar vedanga jyotisha calendar existed in india that followed the yuga chaturyuga calendars so and the epoch goes uh, even beyond 13500 bc but 13500 is because all vedas refer to the jeeva the sharada sharad ritu means the autumnal equinox so the occurrence of autumnal equinox at ashwin was the basis for the uh, the reformed calendar of vedanga jyotish the yuga chaturyuga calendar was introduced after 13500 bc so based on this we can say that the bharatvarsh has a, a chronological history of more than 15000 or 16000 years and uh, i'll just skip this one because i have already presented on your sathology uh, in my talks that how, how to date surya siddhanta based on the one uh, conjunction so this is how first sheet anchor is the autumnal equinox the occurrence of autumnal equinox at ashwini 13500 and the summer solstice at shravana this is actually vishwamitra uh, the mahabharata refers that vishwamitra reset the nakshatra list starting from shravana because he observed the summer solstice at shravana it is actually almost the same time and then the end of 28 krita yuga that is actually conjunction of all planets in aries in chaitra shukla pratipada that is 22nd february 6778 bc and uh, various other astronomical evidences if we collect it first uh, the autumn the late uh, later during the rigvedic uh, when rigveda was uh, finally compiled at that time mrigashira list was finalized starting from mrigashira orion and uh, the winter solstice was uh, 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 the occurrence of winter solstice at brigashira was the basis for the making the list of nakshatras then after 1000 years a rohini list was finalized considering the shifting of winter solstice to rohini thereafter kritika list the famous nakshatra sukta of atharva veda which gives the uh, 28 uh, list of nakshatras starting from kritika so that actually indicate the shifting of winter solstice to kritika and the various other brahmana or post vedic literature uh, brahmana aranyakas shrota suddhi always refer it to list of kritikas then finally uh, instead of every 1000 years finalizing the list of nakshatras finally al ashwini list even today what we are following starting from the mesha rashi on aries starting from the ashwini nakshatra so the list was finalized when winter solstice shifted to ashwini 7322 bc from there onwards it was assumed that seventh manvantara began because uh, seventh manvantara was named after vaivaswata no that does not mean that 7322 bc to be dated as uh, vaivaswata manu his day he was uh, uh, vaivaswata manu was during the rigvedic period but the seventh manvantara was named after vaivaswata manu and they started re uh, counting the yugas again because 7322 bc the nakshatra list prior to that we followed the list of 28 nakshatras from 7322 bc onwards we have excluded the abhijit and then Uh, we finalized the list of 27 nakshatras based on the better trigonometry and the requirement of spherical trigonometry we have taken only 27 nakshatras this is how the siddhanta jyotisha and the pre siddhanta jyotisha how you can differentiate pre siddhanta jyotisha had 28 nakshatras and they had a um, the calendar of that five year yuga 
but after the introduction of the ashwini uh, list and then thereafter uh two difference one is the nakshatras have been the 28 nakshatra list has been revised to 27 uh, nakshatra list and second is instead of that uh, other uh, we followed jovian cycle from 6700 this is actually maya sura suri siddhanta introduced jovian cycle these two are the major differences between siddhanta jyotish and pre siddhanta jyotish this is how the siddhanta jyotisha uh, siddhantic astronomy of india has the sheet anchor is 22nd february 6778 bc based on that i have arrived the chronology of uh, indian civilization it goes back to more than 14500 bc 16500 uh, years from now and we can even uh, reconcile the one is based on the archaeo astronomical evidence but in tamil history uh, very uh, objectively they maintain the chronological history and the nakkirar who wrote a commentary on irayana ragapural he mentions that there was a first sangam period almost uh, uh, that lasted for 4400 years and then madurai was the capital of uh, Uh, pandian kingdom and that then madurai submerged around 6826 bc thereafter a kavatapuram became the capital of uh, pandian kingdom and uh, that second sangam period lasted 3700 bc and that pandian kingdom uh, pandian capital uh, kavatapuram that submerged by sea during the mahabharata period so we can date 3, 3126 bc around that and there after third sangam period lasted for 1850 years so the irayana ragapural the commentary written by nakkirar he is actually counting 10000 almost 10000 years of history prior to 1276 bc it means the the nakkirar was counting 11226 bc onwards because first sangam period is actually we can say that that 11226 bc was the date of agastya and rishi agastya was compiling not only he compiled the tamil grammar as well as he wrote many suktas of rigveda so we can say the compilation of rigveda was around 11226 bc and this was just a chronological history maintained by the tamil scholars of sangam period so this also establishes the antiquity of indian civilization uh, is uh, more than 10000 bc so now there is a reference of uh, a unicorn horse in uh, rigveda hiranya shringa and uh, rigveda and ajurveda refer to a uh, 34 ribs of uh, a horse having 34 ribs the present horse what is the the central asian horse or we can say, uh, what we have today in india that horse has 36 ribs so the rigvedic ashwa cannot be equated with the uh, the so that's why the the identification of rigveda even talks about hiranya shringa tava shringa ni there is a need to more scientific study it is possible that the, the unicorn horse may have existed because there is a reference of shringa uh, in rigveda as well as uh, even the jaimini ashwamedha it refers that that time only ashwa uh, uh, was uh, mandhata had some ashwa though suitable for ashwamedha and uh, because that rigvedic ashwa became extinct this was the reason why ashwamedha was forbidden in kali yuga it is written in brahma vaivarta purana so how to identify so there is a equus civilensis this is the uh, uh, shivali cause found in archaeology but unfortunately we could not find the unicorn head of the horse but the complete the 34 ribs have been established this equus civilensis had 34 ribs and uh, the fossils of equus civilensis found in andhra pradesh tamil nadu means in entire india the fossils have been found 
and this uh, shivalik horse had only 34 ribs so rigveda is referring to actually the shivalik horse not the equus caballus that the central asian horse what we have today and uh, archaeologists established that this uh, equus sivalensis or the shivalik horse became extinct at least 8000 before 8000 bc it means the rigveda might have been written at least before 8000 bc because that refers to a horse having 34 ribs no horse today has uh, 34 ribs it means an extinct horse was referred in rigveda and that was shivalik horse and this shivalik horse was found only in india so it is a hard evidence to reject the so called aryan migration or aryan invasion from central asia and the antiquity of the rigveda and even uh, we need to find out uh, because horns the are made of materials that found in human hair and nails so that cannot survive for so long in indian conditions but let us see whether we can find in any glacial uh, region in the himalayas if we can uh, fully preserved this shivalik horse if it can be found but the unicorn some are found in siberia and others so we need to see a variant of that unicorn may have existed which was referred to as ashwa in rigveda and because the scythians of Af- uh, afghanistan region they were the breeders of this kind of ashwa during rigvedic period that's why the ashwapati mentioned in uh, upanishads of kekaya uh, janapada he was actually the breeding these uh, rare species of uh, equus sivalensis the shivalik horse and this was the reason why shivalik horse became a symbol a power symbol for the scythians and uh, that's why the indus valley so called indus valley civilization why the seals found uh, very uh, they depict the this uh, unicorn horse was most probably uh, that was the shivalik horse and uh, same scythians when they migrated from uh, the scythian according to the scotland because presently scotland uh, they actually uh, have this uh, uh, unicorn have have their national animal or even uh, they have a statues of uh, this uh, unicorn horse why because scythians were the breeders of unicorn horse and they always uh, had uh, the symbol of unicorn have as their power symbol and the the traditional history of scotland mentions that scots were actually uh, the progeny of scythian prince and egyptian princess scota so this is how we need to uh, reconcile the world chronology then this is the indian chronology and various archaeoastronomical evidence as well as the traditional uh, the chronological uh, evidence from the tamilian history and the archaeological evidence from the rigveda that establishes that indian civilization existed more than 10000 bc now the greek civilization this is actually the atlantis that plato he mentioned that before his lifetime almost 9000 years before his lifetime atlantis city was submerged by sea so almost 9000 to 10000 bc so greek civilization existed prior to 9000 to 10000 bc and greek historians mention about the time of dionysus or bacchus from there to Sandrakotus the king of indians and the period was 6421 years so you have to go back to the 7000 bc to date uh, fixing of the date of dionysus or bacchus and the most uh, the ancient uh, the astronomical evidence from the greek civilization is thema mundi it is the astro uh, the uh, the oldest astrological chart and it ref- it actually mentions the vernal equinox occurring at cancer so the occurrence of vernal equinox cancer can only be dated around 6500 bc and greeks also followed some kind of a four four yugas like uh, like in india but they dated as the golden era silver era and bronze era and iron era 
So the based on that, the golden age ended six thousand seven hundred seventy seven BC, and the silver age ended as per the Greek sources, what mentioned by Hesiod, that when Taurus Scorpio had replaced by Gemini and Sagittarius as the constellations governing the equinoxes. So Gemini, it means. uh the prior to 3777 bce the vernal equinox used to occur at gemini and autumnal equinox used to occur at sagittarius these two have been replaced by the taurus it means around 3777 bce the vernal equinox shifted to taurus and the the uh, and uh, as well as the scorpio uh, the autumnal equinox was uh, uh, at scorpio and bronze age and this is the actually the uh, reconciling the chronology when we reconcile the chronology and uh, fix the date of trojan war then we can start uh, arriving the uh, true chronology of greek civilization and we need not to refer anything to first ad to arrive the greek civilization presently what they do they just uh, take the first ad and they date the alexander that 323 years before the christ Uh, Alexander died, so they fix the death of Alexander around 323 BC, because they are referring to the first AD. But Alexander has nothing to do with the Jesus birth. Alexander's date has to be fixed based on the Greek sheet, the sheet anchors of Greek civilization instead of the Christian mindset. Now the Gobekli Tepe, Nevali Kori, and uh, uh, there were uh, numerous evidences in Greece. No, sorry, in uh, Turkey, uh, they all refer to a, an Anatolian civilization or Anatolian uh, and the, a kind of a uh, composite civilization, Greek and Anatolian, and uh, these have been dated back to ten thousand, nine thousand BC. So a civilizational existence in Uh, east europe existed since 10000 to 9000 bc now let us move to the persian civilization another tragedy with the persian civilization what happened with india so similar uh, thing happened in the persia they accept only up to achmenid prior to achmenid empire they reject entire history of persia because the persian civilization because uh, the last king of uh, achmenid empire was defeated by alexander this was the reason why they accept achmenid in case alexander is not linked to the achmenid empire they would have even rejected the history of uh, achmenid empire but presently numerous archaeological evidence and the literary evidence is available but the problem is prior to achmenid empire what is what was the persian history so the firdausi is shahnama and avesta and even uh, the lot of uh, books written by persian historians they start their history from the kayumars and the from ahurmazda and ahurmazda's son was kayumar then thereafter the hushang it's a lot of the huge history and the chronological history has been given and if you count it uh, the chronology whatever is given that goes back to around uh, 11000 to 14000 bc now you, uh, you just reject it because the christian mindset is you cannot consider this as a history because the earth was created or only civilization can only born only after 4000 bc this is the belief of modern historians and the kayanian dynasty and then the zarathustra who was actually mentioned in plato the, the plato says that zarathustra who wrote uh, the gathas of avesta he lived at least 6000 years before plato so around 6000 7000 to 6500 bc we have to fix the date of zarathustra uh, who wrote the gathas of uh, uh, avesta but modern historians reject everything because anything written in avesta the way they rejected the rigvedic history and everything similarly they rejected the the chronological history given by the persians they accept only history up to the achmenid and prior to that they think that babylonians or sumerians were dominating them now this is the problem zarathustra 
who compiled avesta around 7000 bc because during the sasanian dynasty the or even uh, during the akmilid empire the avesta was revived by the zoroaster 2 that maghism so that time they uh, re actually they wrote the avesta and even during the sasanian period uh, they brought back the avesta from greek so that's why the avesta the is uh, 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 has to be dated around 7000 bc the way i told you about rigveda has to be dated around 11000 bc and uh, during the after this zarathustra one aratta kingdom uh, king king arjas he actually ended the rule of kayanin dynasty and he took over the kingdom so in the northern iran the arattas and the scythians arattas and scythians uh, have the common origin and they share the political and as well as they share the power and these arattas have been mentioned in sumerian tablets and not only this aratta kings reigned over from 6900 to 3000 bc and uh, numerous uh, one aratta king even celebrated uh, a navroz uh, at least 2000 years before the king of cyrus so what about this iranian legend one aratta king was celebrating navroz 2000 years before the king of cyrus so these are the so entire world civilization the persian civilization also much much ancient than what is being taught today because we all believe that the no civilization can exist prior to 4000 bc this is the blind belief of the modern academicians because that is actually christian faith and sumerian civilization also like a berosus he was the person who wrote the babyloniaca so in that one apart from that there are the numerous sumerian king list and uh, all they actually date back to 10000 bc 7 because the uh, the king list given the ur 3 uh, whatever the king list have been found in sumeria if you just add the dates or the uh, the regnal periods given in the sumerian king list those all add up to 7000 bc 6500 to 7000 bc now there is a problem so what they do because uh, no civilization can exist prior to 4000 bc so modern historians assumed that probably so various dynasties uh, reigned concurrently that's why they reduced the sumerian kings datings up to 3000 bc only they don't go beyond 3000 this is how they contract the chronological history of the sumerian civilization so they uh, the akkadian empire only they uh, come out and then this is the what i have reconciled then let us go to egyptian civilization the manetho manetho was the author of uh, the uh, traditional chronological history of egypt and he clearly mentions that the egyptian god demigods for ruling okay that we will see but there was a, a migration of sam's descendants he was the mesorum why is it was called misr even today the the muslims and even in india we call it misr because it came from the mesorum this mesorum was actually he migrated from persia to egypt and he was a descendant of the sam and this uh, mesorum's descendant was a, uh, the first king of egypt is menes now the problem is that sam was actually the persian king what i told you he he was a descendant of that nariman of the persian history since you have rejected the persian history a chronological history written by the uh, firdausi and the persian historians the christian historians what they did they distorted the sam has ham and they said that he was the descendant of the no so this is how they christianized a persian king called sam to uh, no son and they said that all egyptians are actually the descendants of the no son so this is how the this is the biggest christian fraud committed in egyptian civilization so actually the menes he founded uh, the first dynasty around 6000 bc as per the chronology given by the manetho and he was actually descendant of the sam of persia so the egyptian kings uh, the the egyptians were actually the uh, persian migrants 
and they have nothing to do with the no no was much much later but since modern historians simply trace the chronology from only biblical sources uh, therefore they changed sam to ham and they claim that he was actually the descendant of no this is how they contracted the egyptian history the first dynasty they date around 3000 3100 bc uh, today but actually the chronological history given by manetho that goes back to 5500 to 6000 bc now the sothik cycle also they have uh, incorrectly fixed around 2773 bc the sothik cycle should commence at 3605 bc what i have established astronomically even the 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 french scholar who deciphered the egyptian hieroglyphs he himself said that egyptian civilization the first king was actually he started ruling 5867 bc but the problem is with the western uh, the so called european academy because they were actually by birth christians they can't believe that any civilization existed before the flood or even before 4000 bc that's why they rejected entire traditional chronological history of egypt but unfortunately no traditional egyptian left in egypt only muslims so they don't bother about the chronology of the egypt otherwise they should reclaim their antiquity much prior to what the christian historians have taught to them assyrian civilization also it is also similarly it is much much older and actually the adam of uh, bible was adamu this is the reason why the uh, early anno mundi uh, started around 6000 bc later 2000 years have been deleted by the christians because uh, there was no apo- apocalypse or a kind of a, a flood or a destruction the world did not end after that that's why since there was a christian faith they revised the uh, anno mundi from 6000 bc to 4000 bc this was the first fraud committed by the christian historians and another for fraud committed committed by the christian historian was identification of the stam who was actually the descendant of the persian kings of avesta what mentioned in uh, the kings names mentioned in avesta and uh, he was not a ham a descendant of no so this is the a uh, true chronological history when we uh, arrive the assyrian chronology similarly that scythian and arattas because arattas and scythians have been mentioned in uh, uh, even uh, numerous text of western uh, uh, like uh, uh, tablets of uh, babylonian and syria and even uh, uh, the tablets found in uh, uh, sumeria and the arattas are mentioned in mahabharata also and not only that in bodhayana shrota sutra refers to that amavasu was ruling up to arattas so these arattas so the so called indus valley civilization as per my uh, uh, there was actually scythians became very powerful arattas from 7000 bc to 3500 bc during that time Uh, the so called indus valley civilization what we call about up to gujarat the tablets and the kind of a logo syllabic script was used by these scythians and arattas and they uh, actually conquered up to bulgaria and uh, the scythian migration only led to so called uh, the indo european languages because scythians uh, are shakas uh, used to speak uh prakrit variant language but they you, uh, they followed a logo syllabic script india never followed a logo syllabic script and we always followed brahmi and a phonetic logic based script only starting from rigvedic era this is the reason why only this logo syllabic script found only in that region where the scythians were at. and during the mahabharata era arjuna conquered the entire this region and uh, from there onwards the brahmi and kharoshti script was introduced that's why why we call it that the civilization ended nothing has ended only few cities uh, were destroyed due to flood or uh, the um, disappearance of saraswati river 
so so we have to reconcile the the scythian civilization uh, uh, was actually related to the so called indus valley civilization this is how that links up with the indian antiquity and the scythians uh, not only migrated to the eastern europe as well as even some tusharas during that tokharins they migrated up to the scandinavian countries and the russia this is how out of india migrations led to uh, evolution of various civilizations so that this topic we will uh, discuss later how out of india migrations what i wanted to present here is the antiquity of world civilization is much older than 4000 bc but the modern academicians have been taught that you cannot think anything beyond 4000 bc why because christian faith so now you don't agree scientifically you can't prove that the uh, the, uh, the earth was created somewhere in 4000 bc because earth had 4 billion years as per modern scientists believe but they camouflage that christian faith as such the no civilization can born before 4000 bc so this is actually they are only faithful historians they are not a scientific historians so there absolutely. is a need to write a scientific chronology absolutely and they call hindus as atheist hindu pagans that's a common word used for all hindus yeah. <laughs> 1.2 billion hindus across the world and many of the americans are hindus many americans who are born in america are hindus native americans native south americans native europeans romanis native russians native chinese yeah. native asian yes. countries if i calculate all the native populations they still become the majority a brahmic population you can count on fingers to be 3 billion maximum 3 or 3.5 billion yes. the majority is yes. believes in an alternative view other than the abrahamic thought process including the history so calling people pagan and the kind of a, the atrocity committed by the christians if you see we haven't that so called pagans are the mithraist nothing is available today not even single textbooks of their i haven't found wiped out completely wiped out everything all their temples have been taken over everything Uh, uh we have uh, an iota of evidence is not available presently this is the real uh, i can say ethnic cleansing uh, uh, we can say or a kind of a genocide committed by the christians a cultural within, genocide by within, the with, christians yeah within usa so called the self declared leader of the free world the on the sacred sites of native americans they build highways they build border walls they will gas pipelines on the sacred like the temples or they which are the temples for the native americans and they build all kinds of things to continue subjugate you know if i ask any american how many languages native americans you know or how many native american tribes still alive by god's grace by our uh, bhagwan's grace we can say that 573 tribal nations exist in the usa today 573 oh. and mm -hmm. and they are increasing numbers are increasing because what has happened is even though the abrahamic traditions try to amalgamate them into the faith baptize them many of the native american leaders were baptized but their third generation fourth generation is coming back to native culture and so even though they may look white yes. but they are coming back and accepting their native traditions and they find much more happiness in those traditions because they are now practicing the original religion of the land of usa and people do not know oh. the name of amrique am people say it's a portuguese tribe or no amrique a m e r i q u e was a princess of ojibwa tribe in the northeast usa okay. and according to them america is called the turtle island kurma hmm. uh, dweep that is known as which is very much uh, in aligned with the pushkar dweep name which is given in our tradition crown is given to africa but the pushkar dweep is, is the name given and they believe that the snakes hold their earth that's what they believe <laughs> very close to vedic tradition and somewhere and their worshipable deities are the big bird which catches snakes and elephants and it can increase or decrease in size as they want that's why the entire native american tradition 
is based on eagle because uh, peregrine eagle falcon peregrine falcon which we europeans have given name is peregrine falcon but they are very common and most of the native traditions they kept pet wolves and we all know wolves story in in vedas and other places there's so many things we can yes. point out in native cultures which is common 65 million romanis who sushma swaraj and other officially acknowledged they moved from india they were displaced because they did not belong to the abrahamic faith they believe they have, if you see the flag it's got chakra in there you'll say why the chakra is come there and and the 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 reason is because of the it's a, it's a wheel of time and the kal chakra and the wheel of time is also samvatsar which is movement of yes. sun and also yes. it is the wheel so the bhagwan vishnu doesn't hold a wheel he holds a chakra which is a weapon but kala kala chakra which is a wheel of time and that wheel of time has 24 spokes Uh, yes is, and we all know 12 are the divisions in a 12 are main yes. division but it hold 24 spokes so so many things common in the native cultures all over the world my next discussion with you will be why the academic world which is dominated by the west is perpetuating the lies and why the indian academics mainstream see we are the alternative academics we are the hobbies yes. you can say you know you and i have yes. a hobby to research it's our interest is our passion but yes. why the mainstream academics don't do that the reason is salaries jobs like if they don't yes. follow the line they'll be kicked out you know uh, like if you join an american <laughs> campus and like many books are being sold in my, my my books are sold in american campuses but i tried that can i give a free visiting class and they said no because you are not a phd from our college because when you do a phd you just hmm. sign that you have to follow our academic line so propaganda is mainstream so uh, thanks to social media yeah. we can talk really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, thank you actually last uh, the way the closely though they made it gated community they don't allow any others to their community Oh. then uh, they are actually guarding their false narrative and exactly. false facts exactly and and the more you hear the, uh, the anyway i can go on and on but uh, thank you so much vedvir ji and usually good discussion and viewers should watch till the very end of all our discussions so please like share subscribe and let us reach the target that we should be all of you feel pity on satology that we don't have enough subscribers but it's up to you you know and thank you so much namaskar thank you thank you namaskar ji